Welcome to this video on the Flex Microform. Today, we're going to learn how to integrate Flex Microform within your web page. Flex Microform will allow you to accept payment information in a PCI SAQA fashion, mitigating much of your PCI exposure. Essentially, CyberSource, through this technology, receives the sensitive data on your behalf and converts it to a transient token that can be used for processing or other CyberSource services. Let's start on the CyberSource Developer homepage. The CyberSource Developer Center holds all the product specification, documentation, sample codes, and other assets. In this session, we're going to focus on Flex Microform. Let's navigate to the Flex API section. Here, you'll find the API Explorer section, as well as links to the Flex Developer Guides and Flex Sample Code. We highly suggest that you download one of the GitHub Flex samples. They are encapsulated in the sample application that runs Flex Microform end-to-end. -end. For this example, we're going to walk you through Node Sample and show you how the Flex Microform is integrated in a web page. This Getting Started guide gives a step-by-step -step overview of Flex Sample. The Flex Microform is basically comprised of three steps. Step 1. Setting up a server-side request which will provide the authentication component of the product. Your server-side request will generate a capture context, which provides the authentication and one-time keys needed for the Microform front-end. Step 2. Setting up the client-side component, which involves leveraging the capture context to invoke the Flex Microform SDK within your web application and place the Microform fields within your web page. And Step 3. Validating your transient token. The transient token is a JWT object. This data structure can be cryptographically validated against the capture context to ensure it wasn't tampered with. Note, once complete, the transient token can be used for payment processing or other CyberSource services. Creating the capture context is as simple as calling a CyberSource REST API request with target origin of your web page. You can test this API on the API reference page. We can quickly glance through it. In this example, you can see the Flex Key API expects encryption type as RSA OAEP and target origin. Target origin should be the URL of your web page hosting the Flex Microform. Let's take a look at that JWT in the response. As you can see, it is a valid JWT with headers, body, and signature. The body has target origin and one-time JWK used to transfer sensitive information. Flex Microform uses a one-time key to ensure every transaction is encrypted in transit, making the transfer payment information over the web secured. Let's now go to our next step, which is setting up the client side. One. Load the Flex Microform using the script tag. Two, identify your div tags, the location where you are placing our Flex Microform iframes. Flex Microform is a set of iframes that captures data invisibly on your behalf. The look and feel is still the same as your page, but the payment information is securely provided to CyberSource. Three, it invokes new Flex application by passing the capture context. Four, you can identify styles for your Flex Microform application fields. Five, you can also create Microform form objects, like in the example, your card number and CVV fields. We'll see this in more detail in our node sample from GitHub. Here, you'll find the API Explorer section with links to developer guides and Flex sample code. Now, let's go through the Node.js Flex sample application from CyberSource's GitHub repository. This repository provides simple examples demonstrating usage of the CyberSource Flex SDK using either a headless JavaScript call, Express Flex JS, or a fully customizable hosted field, Microform, Express Microform, which is incorporated into your checkout page. The README file provides a step-by-step -step guide that will help you execute the sample on your local machine. A prerequisite requires you to have basic Node, Express, and NPM setup installed. 
We'll download the zip format code for the demonstration. Unzip and extract all the application code. Now that we have downloaded the repository, let's choose either Flex Microform or FlexJS directory. For the purpose of the demonstration, choose Express Microform directory. Now the next step asks us to update app.js with your Cybersource Sandbox credentials. However, the file comes with default working credentials. Just use the credentials that come by default. The sample credentials are the same as those used on the developer.cybersource.com site, so any output from the sample can be leveraged in the Developer API Explorer. For the next step, we need to run the npm install command to download all the dependencies needed for the application to run. Next, start the npm server in debug mode to see any error messages in detail. The server starts on default port 3000. So let's bring up the checkout page on the browser using localhost URL. So what happens when we load this page? The capture context is created and is passed back to the front end and is used to invoke the page. Let's look at the index page driving the application. Here we have a form that contains the card holder name field, card number field, security code field, and expiry input fields for the sample. Notice that the card number and security code fields are div tags and not native input fields. Flex Microform will attach the secure fields to these div tags when we invoke the Microform library later in the code. Moving down, this is where we add the script to load the Flex Microform JavaScript library, which we'll invoke later. Here are the various links to elements that we added on the top in the form field note, the capture context that was passed from the front end. We identify style, look, tone, and feel of the page. We create the new flex object passing capture context. Then a new microform object by passing style we already defined. After that, we create fields for number and security code and attach them to the div elements from the above section. Next is the listener event for the click on pay button. This sample also captures the expiration month and year that is passed along with the rest of the data in the tokenization requests. All this information is now passed on to the Flex Microform create token call that gives back the transient token. Now let's capture the information from the sample page. Here, we fill in the test card details. Once the card details are accepted, the Flex API in the SDK encrypts the sensitive data and creates a temporary transient token. The sample gives you the option to integrate with the Payments API and pass this transient token to the Payments API for authorization. We'll show you how this transient token can be passed to the Payments API via the Developer Center. We are on the Developer Center. Let's go to the API reference from here. On the API reference page, select Payments API. Within the Payments API, select Payment with Flex Token. This example will show us how to create a permanent TMS token. Copy and paste the transient token from our sample application into the transient token JWT field. Token create in the action list array is what allows us to create the TMS token, which is the permanent token. Click on send. As you can see, payment is authorized using transient token and we also have a permanent TMS token under the token information object. If you would like more information on Flex Microform, please visit developer.cybersource.com and thank you for watching this video.